Hi, I'm Arlen Geyer. Today I want to talk about the main things that you want to think about when you're getting ready to take a picture. So the first one, I'm going to be taking a picture of this parrot that my, I believe it's a parrot, that my sister made many years ago. And that's hanging from a tree. And um, the first thing you want to think about is um, your basic point of view and uh, the perspective that you want to take. So uh, I want to take a picture of this parrot with the tree trunk behind it and uh, then the woods behind that. And um, I haven't decided whether I want the tree trunk to be in focus or not, or the woods to be in focus. So I'm going to try it both ways. I'm going to try one where just the parrot is in sharp focus, and then I'm going to do another one where I've got uh, a wide range of depth of field um, so that I get not just the parrot in focus, but also the tree and uh, perhaps the woods behind that if I can get that much. So. So the first thing I want to do is find my point of view uh, that's going to give me the, uh, the angle I want. And uh, there are a number of things to think about when you're doing that. Most modern cameras um, have zoom lenses on them, which means that you can move back or, for or forward toward your subject to change your perspective. And um, you can zoom in. So if I move back, I can zoom in to get the same angle of view um, to fill the frame with the parrot. Or I can move further forward and zoom out to get that same um, amount of the of the parrot showing, it's going to change the relationship between the parrot and the background. To when I do that, so that's something that you want to take a look at when you're um, when you're sort of stalking your subject, uh, trying to figure out exactly what the best point of view is. So I've decided that I want to be fairly close up, and uh, that's going to give me also um, a uh, more range of distance between the, the parrot and the background, which is going to make the background more out of focus. So uh, I'm going to take a picture from about here. I mean, I think I'm just about just about out of the uh, camera angle there, so I'll stand here while I'm talking. And so what I want to do first is um, I'm going to put my camera in manual mode, and if you... Um, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to use this info button here to display this in, this information on the on the um, LCD screen which is useful to have I don't know if you can see that but um, most of this information or some of this information is also available through the viewfinder but um, if I look at it on here uh, it's, it's just easier to look at so but I want to um, aim the camera at the subject with the framing that I want to use and then determine what the appropriate exposure is going to be now the appropriate exposure, the first thing you want to do is there are three things that uh, will get to the right exposure. One is the ISO, which is the uh, sensitivity of the sensor to light. And another is the aperture, which is how, how wide open the lens is. And the other is the shutter speed, which is how long the shutter is open exposing the sensor to light. So those three factors all are taken into consideration when you are taking your picture. So the first thing you want to do is the lower the ISO, the better the quality. So I'm going to start by putting my ISO on the lowest setting available on this camera. That's ISO 100. So I do that by uh, pushing that little dial. Make sure you don't go into auto, but just set it on 100. And now with the ISO on 100, I'm going to take a look here with the info screen. And uh, to get the shallow depth of field where I have just the parrot in focus, I'm going to set my f-stop or my aperture to um, wide open. So in this case, it's going to be f4.5. And uh, so with that, that set at f4.5, I will then um, adjust my shutter speed. I'm going to push the shutter button halfway down to activate the light meter, and then push this down, and I'm going to dial the um, whatever dial you need to do on your camera to change your shutter speed at this point. And I'm going to change the shutter speed until the light meter says that the exposure is correct. And um, so the, the needle on this, um, right in the middle here, there's a, there's a needle and then you have a, a, a zero point and then you have a plus and minus one and plus and minus two. You want the needle to go into the middle for most exposures. So um, I adjust my aperture to the widest open in order to get shallow depth of field. And then I'm going to adjust my shutter speed to whatever it needs to be to balance the light meter. And in this case, that was um, a 60th of a second. And um, 
that works out just fine. Now, the, for the shutter speed, the aperture controls your depth of field, how much is in focus in front of and behind the, plate, the point you focused on. The shutter speed controls uh, whether there's any uh, camera motion. For example, if you leave your shutter open for a long time, um, cam camera shake is going to make a, a blurry shot, or if your subject is moving, that'll make for a blurry shot. And uh, so you want to make sure that your shutter, shutter speed is high enough that uh, that you don't have a uh, blur unless you want it. Um, so in this case, I don't want it. And a 60th of a second is going to be just fine for um, capturing, uh, for stopping what little motion there's going to be in here. So uh, I do that shot. And I'm going to wait till the pair goes around to right there. And so I got that one. And that looks pretty good. And um, so now I want to change it to um, getting a lot of depth of field. Now this time I'm going to change my aperture because my goal here is to get a lot of depth of field. So I'm going to change my aperture. So I push the, I have to push the shutter button halfway down in order to activate all the controls. And then I just dial this all the way down. I'm going to go all the way down to f22. And um, so then with f f22, I'm then going to turn on this display and see what at f22 i need to go down to um looks like four seconds and that's simply not going to work uh, that's way too long unless i have a tripod and even then because my subject is moving it's still not going to work so uh what i need to do now is um change my um iso in order to increase the sensitivity of the sensor so i'm going to move my iso up to, I'm going to move it all the way up to 1600, the highest this camera will allow, and see what I have then. And now I'm going to, and now I'm going to adjust my um, shutter speed until the light meter says that the exposure is good. And right now that's at a thirtieth of a second. And I've decided the sixtieth of a second is really what I want. So what that's telling me is if I want to have um, the 60th of a second, um, the ISO is as high as it can go, so that means I can't have my f-stop or aperture at f22. So I'm going to drop it down. It's more important to me to have a 60th of a second for sharp focus than it is to have f22. So I'm going to compromise and move my um, aperture, say, to f16, and when I move that to f16, I can then move my um, shutter speed to a 60th of a second and that'll produce the appropriate exposure. So I'm now going to, oh, he's right in the position I want. So catch that. And um, those are the things you want to take into consideration. You want your ISO, you want ideally the lowest possible, um, your aperture or f-stop, and that controls how much is in focus in front of and behind what you're actually focused on, your depth of field, and your shutter speed, which is how um, whether you're stopping motion or not. So you need to consider all of those factors, um, and, um, and of course you, you usually can't have your cake and eat it too, but sometimes you can get close. Thanks. I hope that's been helpful.